In this video, we're going to take a look at driving constraints through an offset range. So the drive constraint command, or as it's normally just called drive, we can control the offset through our basic types of constraints, such as the mates and flushes, the angles, the tangents, the symmetry. So basically, we can drive these basic types of constraints through a static offset value and then to a range through the offset, just to kind of see the movement that something might have. So in the case of our finished loader here, from our working files directory, I'm going to take this raised bucket and run that through a range of motion inside of the software here. So I'm going to find the assembly joints three. This is a flexible assembly. And again, flexible allows me to use open degrees of freedom that exist in a subassembly. And what I have in here is an angle four constraint inside of this relationship here for the assembly joints. So if I come in here and change this from 135 to say 120, you can see that adjust. If I change it to 180, all the way down. Well, I'd like to see this go through a range of motion between an offset value of let's say 90. So it's pretty well raised up there. And then run it through animation motion all the way around. So this might be a little dangerous having a bucket go this high above the cab driver, but we'll give it a shot. I'm going to go ahead and right click on the angle four constraint and choose an option here called drive. So here I'm going to drive angle four. And again, you can give it better names so they make better sense, but I can choose my starting value and my end value. Now for this particular one, I'd like my starting value not to be 135, but to be 90, which is actually where it's currently at here. And I want to drive that all the way to 270. Now if I go ahead and hit play here, it's going to run it through its motions. It's actually going by every one degree right now. Just rotate that up a little bit. So there's the full motion. And I can run it backwards as well. There we have it. So that was nice to kind of see motion for it. And if I wanted to save this out to a animation video, like an AVI or a WMV file, then I have the ability to do that. Basically hit record, then play, and it would do a screen capture to capture that out. Let's take a look at a few other settings I have in here. So I do have some options in here, such as driving adaptivity, if I was using adaptivity for this. Also collision detection, which if you have any collision in the model whatsoever, even threaded items or that little bit of rubber I had for these overlapping pieces, then the collision detection is not going to work out so well with the drive constraint. So you might have to start going in there and suppressing certain components, do a correct drive on it, or to isolate certain ones that you really want to analyze. I'm not going to run collision detection here because it will fail in this case. I can change my increment value though, and that will then change about how much it changes by as it goes through that range of motion, and how many repetitions I might like to do. Let's see a little more practical. How about I do the 135 as a start to the 180? We'll do a start, end, and then start. And I'll do three repetitions. In order to make it go faster, up my steps here to about three and a half degrees, and my AVI rate to 15. So go ahead and play this. See, it goes much faster that time between those values. And again, I can record that out then. You slow that down back to one degree for the total step. So a little bit slower there. Basically, three repetitions the start, end, and start. And cancel this. And it puts it back into its state before I got into the drive command. I'm actually going to leave this back at the 135 for the offset value it's currently at. Notice you can also do this on rotational degrees, such as this joint. So you can drive joints there to show the movement. So anytime you right click on one of these types here, you have that option. The only ones that it does not exist for would be for the motion constraints, the transitional constraints, or the constraint sets. These type up here, which are not covered in this course, cannot be driven. But these assembly types here can, as well as the joint types. Now some creative ways you can use drive constraint would be to drive something until collision, and then constraint to lock that in that collided place. So that you can then have that as a stop for something. So I don't know exactly where this lands as it rotates around. You know, may I had something in this particular loader 
maybe up here on the cab that when it hit that, it needed to stop there. And that was going to be a static reference for me. So you can use the drive constraint to help you put together your finished design a little bit more effectively for your static model. So this has been a look at the drive command inside of the Autodesk Inventor assembly environment.